Hey guys, welcome back to my channel where we're all about leveling up, elevating, and living our absolute best lives. So I get a lot of messages from you guys on how to like relocate <laughs> to Canada and North America. Meanwhile, my whole channel is moving to Africa and moving, moving to Africa series. But I feel like it wouldn't do justice without giving both sides of the story. So there are a lot of people who relocate to North America every year from Uganda, whether it be for school, for work opportunities, or just to see a different side of the world and just get out of here. I know that it's not easy to leave Uganda and to go abroad, however, it also isn't that easy to be abroad either, um, but they have both of their pros and cons on both sides, whether you're in Uganda or whether you're, whether you're in North America. In this video, we're fortunate enough to sit down with Kemi Yondo. She is amazing, extremely inspiring. She's an actress, a filmmaker, a screenwriter, um, a director. She's won um, many awards, also Forbes 30 Under 30, and she has a wonderful fund uh, called Five for Five, so $5,000 for five amazing um, female directors here in Uganda and she's really really digital lit on that as well as starting very many programs while also here in Uganda that are still running while she is in LA like guys when I say inspiring I mean inspiring um, so I sat down with her just to talk about being a creative um, and being in the arts industry while in Uganda and also realizing maybe the cap that there might have been and seeing opportunity in LA going there but still funneling and funding and feeding into Uganda at the same time. So I feel like I don't want to take up too much on telling her story, so let's get into this video. All right guys, so we have Kemi here today. I'm so excited because I've been wanting to talk with people who um, really were in the Ugandan space for a very long time. Um, did a lot of really dope things, but then um, also felt like, you know, they can navigate better in other spaces. So really wanted to give them a, a moment to be able to share their stories in order to see if some of you guys may be going through the same thing. So Kemi, thank you so much for being on my channel. <laughs> oh, you're so welcome. I'm so glad to be here. Thanks. If you could tell the people a little bit about yourself, what you did also prior to leaving and like how long have you been gone from, from Kampala? So I started out acting and then I ended up writing and then um, I was, I went to school in the States. I got my master's in the States and then I spent a year in LA. I came back home and I started up Akadope. I was uh, directing music videos for a bit. I shot a short film in Uganda and got involved with the film industry. And I was back home for about a total of two years. Okay. And then I was like, it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing but, you reached the count. And I say, I say, but with a big B because I still, I still am involved, you know, like yeah. I'm physically not in Uganda, but I'm still very involved. Akadope is still running. Uh, oh, yeah. 505, which is a, a fund I started to give five female directors $5,000 to shoot their short film. Oh, uh, that's still yeah. going on. And so I'm still involved in the film industry. I'm planning to shoot my feature in Uganda. And so I'll be home for about four months shooting that. Oh, wow. And then there's another project that could see me being back home for a longer okay. period of time. Okay. Do you feel like... And so I feel like I I'm, still, I'm still in Uganda. Yeah. <laughs> with my art. Not physically, but like... <laughs> but you yeah. Yeah. yeah, I didn't say, I guess I didn't say, I didn't say I'm out and leave, right? Like the things I was still, the things I was doing while I was home, I'm still doing. Yeah. Okay. That's amazing. I wasn't sure about that part. That's why I wanted to like, like dive deep into that in a moment. Um, so do you feel yeah. like at the time you chose to make that move out of Uganda, it was like, it was a necessary move? Did you feel like you had to kind of like cap? Or do you feel like yeah. you still would have been able to do what you were doing in LA. Do, do you get, I don't know if I'm asking. Like yeah, that. yeah, I think I, I had to, I think I had to leave. I think um, there are a lot of, as an artist, 
there are a lot of obstacles being an artist in Uganda. And I, I always give advice. When I give advice, I'm, I'm not telling you to do it the way I do it. Yeah. What I'm telling you is to have the same thought process. So actually my advice is rooted in how you think about your life. Your answer may be to stay. Mm-hmm. But I ask myself, what place will allow me to accomplish the things I want to do in Uganda, actually? Yeah. And it was that it was the States. Uh, if I t- talk about five for five, I wouldn't have been able to raise $25,000 in Uganda. In yeah. fact, if I tell you how much money I raised, <laughs> Afro. So if I take the project five for five, for instance, I would not have been able to raise that $25,000 for those five directors. Yeah. In fact, I was fundraising everywhere. I was fundraising globally. How much I got from Uganda was $500. Are you joking? <laughs> I'm not joking. $500 out of the $25,000. Now okay. we can say all we like about like, oh, pay discrepancy. But that is not... That is that is not even a tenth. That's not like <laughs> that's what? not pay discrepancy. That's just lack of appreciation. Yeah. And I'm to sorry. be honest, that five hundred dollars mostly came from friends. Yeah. And so I approached. I approached certain companies in Uganda. I approached. Uh, I approached people. Yeah. <laughs> and they do not see the value. Yes. So I approached, I approached multiple people. And so most of that money came from American connections. Uh, if I wasn't working in America, that wouldn't have happened. Yeah. And so for me, I was always very clear that the things I am trying to do is actually going to require me to be outside of Uganda. It's going to require me to be in a society that values the arts, quite frankly. Yeah, actually, to be honest with you. And Uganda is not one of them. Wow. So, well, I'll get into finances in a second, but um, quick question. Besides finances, what other limitations and hurdles did you feel like you couldn't overcome while being in in, in Kampala or in Uganda in general? (laughs) Kampala is a very interesting Petri dish of (laughs) artists. I've never been in a place where people do not clump together there is a bit of a crab in the barrel like yes. yeah so it's me versus you and that's not how it is in other places like yeah. artists really support each other other artists and so it's kind of, it, it that was a little bit hard for me because let's take akado for instance Mm -hmm. Akadope has seen about 270 musicians. Oh, wow. To keep Akadope running without funding, Mm -hmm. we need just about 150 tickets sold. So Mm -hmm. if every artist that has benefited from Akadope at least (laughs) just attended, we would be like, it would be easy. We wouldn't need funding. Yeah. But that's not what happens. People come perform and, and they don't come back to support other artists. It's not even about us. Yeah. They don't support their fellow artists. There's no interest in other artists. Same with actors. They, it, there's a very me versus you mentality. I'll never forget, like, mm-hmm. I was even talking to someone. They were asking for my advice on the film industry in Uganda and I'm giving them my advice and then I have my premiere and then they don't come now that's fine but it's just it's weird to me I'm like what did you want to do it's weird in general it's kind of that thing when it's like when you look for mentorship add value so the adding value would be to attend your thing yeah exactly and I don't think this person was looking for mentorship but it was just like well, if you're trying to get into the industry, you should be supporting fellow, yeah. fellow people. But it, it, is, it is a very sequestered, I would say, um, place. So I, I would say those are the two things. But I will also say 
that clumping and crab in the barrel comes is the result of limited finances. Oh, a thousand. Because when there are finances, you are led to believe it's either me or you. Right. It's either me or you that's going to get this coin. Right. It's either me or you that's going to get this audience. It's either me or you. So then you're like, well, I'm better than Rachel. No, 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 she, that's not me. And it's like, no, actually what y'all should be doing is We're working together. <laughs> yeah, joining forces and trying to figure out how to collaborate. Yeah. And so when I do see people collaborating, I mean, I know they're my friends, but <laughs> like, <laughs> bold, but I like, outside of them being my friends, like seeing how they collaborate with other women, other people to me, that's the answer. Right. And to me, that's what's exciting about their brand is that it is solely about collaboration. And so I would say, I feel like if the artist community did that more. Yeah. I mean, even in December, I was hearing like uptown, what downtown art versus uh, uptown art. And I was like, wait, oh, so well, I've heard this music, but that was about it in terms of like. So, they were talking about filmmakers, <laughs> actors. Yeah. I was like, that's wild. <laughs> that's wild. And it's true. It's true. But it's I, like, never, it's a I, have, I have never, I have never in any, and I've been like, I've lived in different places. Yeah. I've never seen artists where it's like, oh, these artists are only for this project and these artists are only for this project and then they don't intermingle. It's very weird to me. It's very strange to me because in my projects, oh, I just pick the right people and I don't care. Whereas it feels like some projects are like socialites yeah, and then other projects are like, oh, the theater actors who you don't really know their names. It's just like, it's weird. The only time I can see why anyone would differentiate between that is if you're on a marketing team of a brand and you're trying to find like your target market. Other than that, I'm like, art and creativity is still art and creativity. It is what it is. That's so interesting. <laughs> wow. <Yeah. laughs> I, I truly think all this comes from lack of money, lack of, lack of uh, supporting, yeah. lack of... Actually, so to open up that question about finances, so given your $500 that you, that Uganda so generously was able to collect, <laughs> was it a lot faster once you got to um, the U.S. to just be able to accumulate, to get to your goal, your end goal, or? Oh, I have to add one thing yeah. about that, is two, two production companies, actually three production companies came on board. Oh, and wow. So media, media 256. So even though they shot the film for $5,000, they got the value of $10,000. Oh, so okay. media 256 came through. Okay, okay that's good. Um, Lukman Films came through. That's weird. And Solomon Jangwe from uh, in the States, animation, his animation studio, Soul Studios, yeah. came through. And so I, I do have to mention that those Ugandan companies showed yeah. up um, oh, and were allies. They're all, you know, owned by Ugandan men and they were allies in supporting this thing. And so I wouldn't have been able to do it without those three. And yeah. so I, I do have to mention that because the, their support really came. Right. Came. And I guess they saw that the benefits of like what you're saying to come together for collaborating. Yeah. yeah just to see the benefits yeah. that, as opposed to just seeing just money. But I do get yeah. what you're saying. I think it is the lack of Yeah. Money. Yeah. No. And like, honestly, honestly that's what it is. financially, like it would have cost way more without them. So. Yeah. Okay. That's a yeah, Showed up in that way. And then like Mona did like makeup for free. Yes. Or like them. And then like, Jonathan Jabs company film report did the BTS. So I did get a lot of support from individuals. Oh, that's good. But financially, yeah. <laughs> so I did. Some people who are not involved in the arts, I did not. Yeah. Know. What year, know. what year was this? That I was raising this money? Yeah. Mainly. Because a, 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 a year and a half ago. Okay. So now I'm curious because like 
I see that people are trying to do um, like funding and grants on, on the continent. Are those harder to access? It was was it just harder to find that those opportunities were they just not enough because i've seen some of them and they're like okay here's uh 3m and i'm like that's not even a thousand dollars what do i do <laughs> do you know what i mean so i mean i applied i applied i don't want to drop names but i applied to <laughs> you know a company that not a company but like a organization that should have given this funding yeah. And I called them out on Twitter and they were like, oh, please send us an email. We'd love to all for the email. And then, and then they didn't. Yeah. But what I will say is a lot of funding, especially if it's external, mm-hmm. comes with limitations. Oh. And so I didn't want to put that on my artist. So yeah. like, for instance, if you get from British, British Council, you're having to collaborate with British artists. I'm like, I'm not going to tell people to write a short film that <laughs> has to have a British person, but that's their that's their agenda, and that's that's okay. Yeah, that's, that's who they are. Agenda. Yeah. Um. So I found a lot of brands sometimes come with a uh, something. Because, yeah, because of course they're using money to fulfill their own their own uh, yeah. And, uh, narrative. Yeah. Whereas I feel like other countries just give artists money to to let them create art and, and Uganda does not be able to do that. <laughs> I you know what hurts me the most is when I used to go to film festivals and I would see the credits and it would be like Ministry of da 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 this this and then seeing all the funding these people are getting from their yeah. country. And it's mine was like <laughs> we would like to thank the the, the GoFundMe donors of <laughs> and that's <laughs> What kills me too is, um, well, okay, because I'm in like content creation, so it's more so just, it's not like as, I would say, it's more new, I suppose. So even like the bill they were trying to pass, like, God, it didn't happen. I'm trying to charge all of us per social platform per year. And I'm like, do you want us to create? Do you want people to see Uganda or no? <laughs> yeah that's a control thing yeah yeah 100 percent. but like the average person like they can they cannot afford this so that's just you yeah. know i was like i can't i don't want to pay the second or something yeah. <laughs> like why would i do yeah. that <laughs> and then you'll leave that's right. what will happen I go like to the world. go back to canada and then it's no oh, then you lose another artist and that's i what mean happened. In my ideal, I wouldn't have had to leave Uganda to continue creating art. In my ideal, I would have been able to stay. I would have been able to do the things I want. Um, but I just was very clear. I know what I want to do, and I'm not even close. Yeah. And I just was very clear that, oh, this is going to be one of those sacrifices I have to make. Absolutely. And and it is true. Yeah. <laughs> you know. If it wasn't. And also, I love being in two places. I yeah I, I, that's what I always had wanted and then I was like well I don't know like when I have kids how it will work but <laughs> I'm like that's not my hurdle right it now. will work <laughs> it will work kids are fine it will work <laughs> true so if it wasn't for the funding then could you have seen yourself still going to LA for any other reasons like more so for opportunities networking things that maybe it's not not as well I want to say the whole continent maybe not as much of, or as available in Uganda, whereas I think other countries in Africa have more networking within their creative industries. Yes, because I'm very interested in a conversation between two continents. And so yes, yeah. like, writing for TV out here, I do think that you get to like represent a different culture in these rooms, you know, like, and just a different way of seeing, like for instance, P Valley, it doesn't have anything to do with the continent, yeah. <laughs> but I do think my presence in that room brings a different way of seeing, a different way of being. And I think that that comes from one, traveling and being everywhere and right. never, I'm constantly an outsider, I feel like. <laughs> but I also just think that people benefit when there's different kinds of people in a room. Oh, a hundred percent. And so I do love working in Hollywood. I do love being part of this industry most times. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But I also love 
figuring out how to funnel it back to Uganda. Like right. I, that is just my mission. And I know I'm going, yeah. I'm, I'm on my way to achieving it, you know. I love that that was, is your end goal. It's still like, it's not something that maybe ends up in the back burner or something. I love that that's like on your forefront. <laughs> You're like, UG is still, yeah. <laughs> UG is still and back. And I wouldn't be able to do it without AFSA. Like AFSA runs, you know, chemistry class, which is my production company. And she does everything. Any project that I've mentioned on this thing, yeah. AFSA runs it. And so I always joke with her that my goal is to retire her because for real, like I wouldn't be able to do it without her. And so I, that's an advice I would give people. Like if you are trying to move, but keep your footprint is find someone you trust that understands your brand, that understands your story, that understands your passion for the things that you're doing. Cause we only worked on one project together. And I was like, uh, uh, this, I, so I'm a tie on you <laughs> and she does everything she literally yeah. does everything and I will retire her <laughs> That's amazing. no but you know how it's so hard to find someone that you can trust that sees your vision and that is as patient so like especially when you yeah. come to Uganda and you're used to maybe I don't know I think I'm not saying it's it's and it's it's super easy in Canada or anything like that. I just think it's easier than what I've experienced here personally. Yeah, because again, there's a lot of like me versus you, whereas I feel like when I worked with Afsa, there was a clear alignment. It's like we are a team, <laughs> you know. Team efforts, yeah. And, and I feel like you just have to find that person where you're, you, you trust them with everything. <laughs> you know, everything, uh, everything. <laughs> your brand. Like she, can make, she can make a decision without talking to me and it will probably be right. And that's the person you need. You're very lucky. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really lucky. I know I, I shouldn't advertise it too much. Someone's gonna <laughs> take her. It's oh, gonna be like, girl, someone's <laughs> paying me. <laughs> someone is paying me in more than compliments girl <laughs> yeah no. so I, I think you gotta find those people yeah a hundred percent so out of curiosity then how was it um being a woman navigating in the creative space and creative industry in Uganda do you know it everything was so foreign that I didn't I didn't uh, notice the woman part of it okay. because until, unless, but on set, I noticed it on set. I noticed it okay. where like people are talking to my sound person, but I'm the director. And I was like, oh, you? who hired you're aware you? you're the director. <laughs> you know who hired you? I did. Oh. Um, and that happened even in December. I was like shooting a wow. sizzle. And someone is talking to my DP, but he was great about being like, that's the director, that's the director. But I could still feel like they didn't, they didn't like respect. I would be like, yo, <laughs> you know? So I feel, I feel it a lot on set, but again, I'm learning. I watch people. I'm like, oh, so yeah. you can work with women. You can, you can, right. you can. And it's such a small industry. It's too small. It's too small to be stupid. That's, That's what I'm saying. So then why would they even do that? <laughs> you, yeah, it's too small. When people do stuff, I'm like, it's, this industry is too small. In every, every, even in LA, it's tiny. Yeah. It's the world travel. Do you but, feel that there? Or have, huh? you, have you felt that there? Have you felt a difference being a woman? Like, or is it just, because I, I don't know. I loved LA when I went. I was like, I feel like everyone just, I don't know. It's just adapts and accepts I don't know there's just a lot of things where I'm like I didn't get yeah. it, but I wasn't sure if it'd be different for you when you got there versus being in you know I think in Uganda also I have to to own that I also come with certain privilege like I think you know having schooled outside of Uganda having being light-skinned yeah. sounding the way I sound I walk with a certain privilege that I have to acknowledge. Mm -hmm. And so there are certain challenges I don't face. And I know it very well it's because yeah. of the privilege that I hold. 
And so I have to acknowledge that because I hate it when people don't acknowledge their own yes. privilege. Yeah. And so certain things I, I can get, and I'm, I'm very aware that I'm using my privilege to get it. I'm very yeah, aware. Very aware. As long as you're aware. <laughs> and it's not just stopping it as long as you're aware. No, no. You have to be aware and disperse it, you know? So, oh, I am using my privilege to get this and let me make sure I am hiring in a certain way. Right, right So right. I always tell people, you got to lean into your privilege because that's actually how you make, Things I think. Honest with you. <laughs> how you bridge because you're like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my, like, just like those three men who were supporting Five for Five, okay, you're gonna use your privilege in being a man in the film industry. Right. And the fact that you have a crew of people that you were able to get because you're guys, and you're gonna use it and funnel it into people that don't have that privilege. I think right. we need to own our privilege. So I will say that for me, yes, there were things that were obstacles, but then there were also things that I know some people, deal with that I didn't have to deal with and so that's why again 505 came up because I was like well I want to find a way to get this money and say here you yes. do it yes that's amazing and you're very right about that but like going back to what you said earlier it's that you, you can't have the mentality that I guess you're against everybody like it's it's me or or the other person it's me and somebody else and I think that's what we need to yeah. do <laughs> so, you, it's so funny I'm remembering all these memories so when I was doing five for five and raising this money someone was like why don't you use that to shoot your feature I was like if I die today I would rather five other directors came yeah. through yeah five other female Ugandan directors came through versus me Right. And also my thing is, I don't want to be the only female Ugandan director. There are stories, again, going back to my privilege, there are stories that I should not have access to. There are stories I do not have access to. And I just want to be able to tell my story and you tell your story. Yeah. And the more <laughs> of us than we are actually it enriches our right to tell a specific story and not be pressured into telling every ugandan person's story because when there's only one person they're like that's not how we are yeah well, i can't tell every ugandan story i can only tell the story i see so let me let me find ways to bring other people so that my story can live in peace yeah so even if you get it selfishly it helps you that there are more of us it does it really does and to be honest with you like okay growing up like people asking where I was from and I was like I'm from Uganda everyone had one narrow perspective of what that looked like what it was about um the history everything and I'm like there's so much more depth just like anywhere else and I, it's crazy that whole crabs in the barrel mindset because I'm like how do you expect anything good to get out of this we can get more funding if people saw that there were more things going on and there was more yeah. like there's, there's power in more <laughs> there is power in more and I also for me I know what my mission is <laughs> and one of those is like I want to be able to hire multiple Ugandan writers for a certain project right so if I don't start working with writers in Uganda how am I going to do that right. you, you, wow. you Apparently, when you get the funding, or miraculously, you just find all this lineup. Everyone assumes it's like, no, what you I'm like, no, I'm like, I want to see how you work. I want to be able to, I don't know, I just feel, I just, excuse me, I feel, I feel strongly about, about coming together. Yeah, I, it's nice. so harder. much harder than this. So yeah. now seeing like the growth, I, well, personally, I've maybe because I, I got more serious in the, my creative self later down the line, but I personally see like a growth on the continent, things like Netflix coming along, doing a lot of uh, projects and stuff. Do you feel like that it, it's a, it's going in a good way, it's going quick enough, or do you feel like there's there are things that could be changed? I think that things are moving. And I would say my challenge to companies like Netflix is 
how do we showcase Africa on a multi-layered way versus mm -hmm. it focusing on South African stories and Nigerian yeah, stories. Yeah. So I feel like right now, even though everyone's like Netflix Africa, right, all you see is Those content two. from Nigeria and South Africa, which is great. I love the shows. I love great the representation. Show. Yeah. But that's not how Ugandans live. And so then my challenge is how do we start looking at different pockets of South Africa? Because like you say, there is already a Western view that Africa is a one country and it's yeah. not true. So <laughs> I think stories are powerful in showcasing niche yeah. culture. And I, I can see that it's starting to happen. I can see... I can see other streamers are getting interested in the content. And that's what I will say. Netflix did make a, a stamp being like, all right, we're going to invest in the continent. And I think it makes other streamers I like, come along, which I like. Doesn't yeah. It? <laughs> and so I, I kudos to Netflix for real on that. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I think people are getting interested. I see it with my own work. I think people are, are very interested in Africans telling African stories, which is very yeah. exciting. It's so um, nice. Um, yeah, just even in, I've been surprised, like even in recent meetings I've been having, there is a lot of curiosity and a lot of empowerment and a lot of um, searching for uh, authentic African voices oh, going on in Hollywood. <laughs> and I think that's amazing. I think yeah. people are making an effort to try find authentic voices. So yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I think it's about to be a great time for African creators. Oh, I'm excited too. I know that their headquarters was- Shout out to Beyonce. Like <laughs> Right. <laughs> to be really? honest, I'm not even joking, but I'm not that's even joking. <laughs> like, those cultural things make yeah. an impact. Like her saying, I'm going to get like these African directors. And yeah. like, it does. It makes a huge impact. That's very true. We love you, Beyonce. <laughs> that's so funny. No, but it's actually, it's true, to be honest with you. But yeah. anyway. It's like Black Panther. I, people always joke. I'm like, absolutely. Yeah. Shifted things for the African narrative, 100%. Yeah. Because when you showcase that there, people are interested in a thing and they are hungry for a thing. That's sure. Because Black Panther in itself, I was like, holy crap. Like how it took over for that moment in time. Yeah. And like people are looking for their identities and America yeah. for their like, searching for yeah. Like, wow. and, I, I, and that's you know when it doesn't stop at like dna testing it starts it's like people want to hear more stories from the continent yeah. and like learn more about where they came from and then that whole like going home to ghana thing happened that's like honestly crazy. it's not a coincidence it's no. not and, and I, I that is the power of story I had zero idea it was even a movement until I started even doing my YouTube videos. Then maybe like two months in of me just doing videos out of frustration, I was like, oh, there's a whole community. Then I was like, oh, there's a worldwide community about like moving yeah. to Africa. I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> okay. That is also something I want to do once COVID stops is, hey, let me not sell my idea. <laughs> but I, I want to put a focus on Uganda yeah. and like bringing bringing people from the diaspora especially from the states to uganda and like curating an experience because i think that yeah. uganda is so special and so i special. love the conversation happening between africans and african americans and i think it needs to continue yeah. because i think that like most of my closest friends here are african american and yeah. the conversations that i have with them have change me and mm -hmm. i think that like them coming to uganda will will do the same for them know? as well no 100 percent. i mean just in the span of the year i've met three male youtubers who moved back on their own journeys of like or moved to africa and they're just african-american strictly like not i guess i'm moving back but in their sense they're like industry yeah. wise yeah and i'm like that's wow <laughs> that's so dope yeah <laughs> and just seeing their perspectives just yeah 
it's very cool. I'm like, this is really interesting. Yeah. I'm just a few final questions. Um, in terms of um, the support, where could, whether it's the industry, the people, whatever may be within Uganda, where could this, where could there be more emphasis on support in order to grow our creative industry? I know you said, of course, like financing and such, but like just, just as people. I think it's supporting, I think it's supporting each other. I think it's removing these divides of uptown, downtown. <laughs> I think it's like, go to every film premiere, whether you like the person or not, like go and make it a practice. Like supporting art is a practice. Right. It is not, it's not always about who you like, who you don't like. Go, show up. If you are a musician, show up for all your fellow musicians. Okay, you don't have to overextend yourself, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you say that you are interested in film, figure out how you can be part of someone's project, whether it's like, oh, do you need someone to deliver food on set? I got you. Show up because I promise you when it's your time around, like those are the people that are going to show up for you. And those are the people that are going to like figure out how you like drop your costs because those small things add up. And I would just say, I gave up on trying to get funding. Like I've given up on that. I'm like learning from you right now that (laughs) I gave up on it. I gave up. I don't care. I don't look for funds. Like in Uganda, I don't because I don't want to waste my time or energy because I I just don't have time for that. Mm. Actually, the support we need is from each other. And that is one thing I'll say. I was telling this to Afsa. I was like, it's interesting that to me in Uganda, shooting is technically cheaper but in LA I see people making films for way less because everyone is supporting each other they have a friend who's a DP they have a friend who's doing sound they have a friend and they just are like come let's create and make this film but I feel like here it's it's I was able to do that with Chenpu I'll say that 100% so many I went and asked people can you support me yeah. And people came on board. My editor came on board. Sound came on board. Um, yeah. Editor, sound. <laughs> that was editing. Yeah. yeah. Came on board. And, like, we, we shot the thing. And I wouldn't have been able to do it. But I think that's, that's how you get stuff done. That was how I was able to shoot him for right. $4,000, $3,300. It's because I didn't have to pay an editor who would have cost me like $4,000. I didn't right, have to right. pay for sound, both post and um, on set. And like them supporting me and best believe whatever they ask for, I will do I will do for free. And now they have a writer yeah. who will do something. They have a director. They have someone who will network. They have someone who can like figure out stuff. Yes. I love like, that. Like, and so I think that's actually how you do it. You have to figure out how to support people, find your crew, find your officer, find your, you know, person that is going to support you even when you don't have coins, yes. you know, because they understand the vision. You're because right. as much as I'm like, oh, I don't care. Or like, I didn't get support. I didn't get support financially, but I have a lot of people around me. Francis Kasura, who like runs Akadope, he will do anything for Akadope because it's his vision now. We share it. It's not mine. He doesn't work for me, you know? And so I think find your people where you're sharing a vision. And I also make sure that that's your baby, Francis. Like, that's yours you know come look after your son you know (laughs) and so um I feel like the more you find your people the easier it gets I always know I can do anything in Uganda I know it because I have my people right and and I think valuing them and yeah that's beautiful I love that like you were able to create that core but still go and it's like your vision to go wasn't to stay it's like i'm coming back i'm coming back bigger and better with whatever it is that i needed i needed to to and i'm coming back to feed in like that's always like even like 
it's on pause right now, but I was like working on a podcast. So I'm in the States, but I have a writer's room mm -hmm. of six writers in Uganda, all Ugandans. So that's another thing I'm passionate about, hiring Ugandans and paying Ugandans. Paying! <laughs> <laughs> I'm just pay people. <laughs> also, yeah, yeah. How did you go about? Okay, question. And now I'm just kind of like thinking for myself. I'm like envisioning myself as you're speaking. How did you go about hiring? Like to be able to find six or not even just one, but six. Like, how did you go about hiring? Uh, I always hire by social media, which is a very big joke to me. And I, yeah. for instance, I shot this thing in Uganda, and people were like ballerinas you're not gonna find ballerinas i posted it on I twitter i was posting about that yeah really did find them oh i thought I you were school you found um, a good amount of ballerinas though, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and i found dancers who weren't ballerinas that like learned it like just wow. enough for the, for the thing that i was shooting yeah. and so i'm a believer that they're out there so exactly. with the writers i also posted on social media and i got submissions mm -hmm. quite a lot and there were some people I already knew that I approached. And yeah, we worked, we were working together I had to put a pause because work got a little bit crazy. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm just pausing on it for now. But yeah, it, I want it to be the first Ugandan podcast that goes. Yeah. No, I love that. That's amazing. Scandalous. Scandalous. <laughs> but yeah, I think. I, I love to hire. I love to feedback. I love to see that, okay, and I'm intentional about it. So mm -hmm. however much I earn, like I look at a percentage that has to go back into the Ugandan yeah, industry. Yeah, I love Because that. then it makes my sacrifice feel worth it. Like right. it makes me feel like leaving home was worth it. Otherwise I'm like, I'm a sellout. <laughs> <laughs> So funny. Yeah, I get, I get what you mean, though. Especially if you're there. Yeah, I get what you mean. Because yeah. yeah. I felt guilty. Let's talk about that. I did feel guilty leaving. Oh, like okay. let's talk about it because I think these are things that people don't mention. I felt guilty leaving, and people made me feel guilty leaving. Why? What did they say to you? Oh, you know, you should be investing in in your country, like. You, you shouldn't be leaving uh, the country to go work in the States for someone else's. But I was always clear. I was always clear. I was like, to do the things I want to do, it's yeah, not going to happen here. Yeah. And I have a vision for what I want to do. Yes. And when I tell you, we have just not even gotten started. Like, it's... Mm -hmm. it's that's it's just going to take some time, yes. <laughs> but I know that I cannot do it in Uganda. And I think that's what your question always has to be. Right. What is a vision I see for my life? Like, look at it, see it, feel it, yes. taste it, touch it. it. And ask yourself, can I complete this while living in this country? And if yes. the answer is yes, don't leave. Yeah, but it's hard. Yeah. Let me tell you, living in Uganda is nice. Yeah. <laughs> it is so nice. Listen, <laughs> that's why my first day turned into two years. <laughs> it's fantastic. Very and good. if you can do that, stay. But if you know, and you always know, if you know you cannot do it, go. Yeah. But just make sure you're intentional about feeding it back. Right, because right. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether I'm in LA or in Uganda. If I'm feeding it back, then I'm feeding it back. Yeah, that's very true. Now, out of curiosity, did you ever go through, like, um, I guess being hindered creatively while being in the country just because of like certain things that you know are taboo to talk about or that maybe we just shouldn't talk about, <laughs> you know, things like that. Yeah. <laughs> and topics. Like I've even no. so many times. Don't talk about certain things on your channel. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I am a bit of a rebel, so no. Yeah. <laughs> no, I love that. <laughs> no, and I also, <laughs> I also am really good with metaphor. And so I can talk about the things I want to talk about without you saying that I'm talking about the yes, things I want to talk about. Yes, I love it. <laughs> so if you watch my short film, you don't know that I'm actually talking about a bill, you know, but mm. I'm talking about a bill. Mm. And so I think that's the beauty of art is that you can have discussions about certain things 
yeah. that doesn't look like a discussion. And I actually think it's a more effective way to have discussions because I think when you're like, are you defending this bill? I think we become like, we start to attack, we start to judge. But I think if we go through storytelling, there's a um, empathy that yeah, comes empathy, with it. Relatability, yeah. And now we're just talking about a girl wearing a mini skirt. Let's yeah. Let's talk about it. <laughs> and so I see it as a challenge. One thing I'll say about Uganda is I'm never hindered creatively. Like that is where my juices come. And I feel I like hundreds. when I'm in Uganda, I feel like anything is possible. Anything I love possible. that. I love like, that. <laughs> I just feel like I can do anything. I feel, I feel excited. Even going home, I just like, I was home for three months and it was, was it three, maybe two, I don't know. I was, I just felt like, oh. Like connected. Yes, I know, in your, yes, in I know what I wanna do. I became very clear about my voice and. Beautiful. I don't have that as much in LA, I will say. LA is good for execution. That's the thing. See, I'm just, I need to live in both places. Most. In Uganda, I'm like, ooh, 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 ooh. And then I don't execute as much because I'm drinking with friends. Yeah. So. <laughs> True. <laughs> in, in, yeah. So I was like, I, this is something all artists should do. I have three journals. I have three uh -huh. journals. Mm. Each one is for a different project. Mm -hmm. So for every project, I have an idea. I have a journal and I keep things. I keep notes. Oh, so in Uganda, I'm always scribbling. Grr, 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 yeah, and yeah. I don't actually sit down because. And then um, I come to LA and it's just easier for me to execute in LA because I'm around a lot more uh, artists that yeah. are working. And so we sit down together and just like execute. Right. So my ideal is six months. No, this is my ideal. That was my, my ideal. <laughs> Six months. My ago. ideal is to live in America, March to November. And then as soon as daylight savings comes, yeah. I go yeah. to Uganda. Yeah. And then I come back when daylight savings is done. That's my yeah. ideal. And I don't know, maybe because LA's like, I think it's warm all the time. I know they complain about cold when like we all don't have like. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but my book, like as I got older, my six months shrunk and shrunk. And it was like literally from end of May to September 1st. I'm okay with being that. I'm no. like, <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I, I like cold. But my I'm ideal cold. is I leave October 30th and I come back um like mid mid uh may so oh my god like, fall is still october 30th? february march yeah huh y'all's fall is still october 30th like around then you still have like yeah weather yeah in la yeah it only starts getting cold in november you're so lucky no we have two fall from september to mid september and it's your time I'm on the beach in october i'm still on the beach oh wow okay well then that makes sense yeah, i get that yeah then i get you <laughs> 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 yeah i just hate the darkness i'm like i can't yeah <laughs> Oh, yeah, I know that too. <laughs> All right, so just um, two two more questions. I know I said that before, but then I got okay. my own life no, no. for myself. <laughs> so two more questions. One being, um, if you can, for those like creatives, kind of understand a little bit more, because I know about you because I like, read, about, like, read about you, we share friends. I saw you like your Instagram. Well, I think before, I think you had <laughs> taken a few things off and I, could, I, just, I understood more of what you do. Oh yeah, I did see you my stuff. <laughs> you took everything down and I was like okay if I know everyone was like why did you delete all your stuff I was like mm, I just didn't like people deciding who I was before they met me <laughs> and we're like, okay. <laughs> if you can kind of just uh, like for those who may not know just a little bit about like your journey um and then some advice to um creatives who are in Uganda who just feel like roadblocks stuck what what to do next yeah so I started out uh, at 17 writing one woman show. So I kind of started out at a roadblock because I wanted to act in a one woman show and there wasn't any about African women. So I decided to write. So my, my uh, career started at a roadblock and I'll come back to this at okay. the end. <laughs> and so that one woman show ended up touring internationally. I went to college in Portland. I wrote another one woman show again 
that came about from a roadblock because I wasn't getting cast. And then um, that show ended up also going around, even went to the Gates Foundation, which is like amazing and a moment in my career. And then I went to grad school in San Francisco. And then at the end, um, we have to do a showcase where you've seen, I couldn't find myself on TV, another roadblock. I was like, oh, I'm gonna have to start writing for TV. Okay, great. Uh, Started writing for TV. Then didn't get my green card, another roadblock, went back to Uganda, shot Chimpu. I was like, well, you gotta be an artist somehow. Yeah. Shot Chimpu, shot Akado, I mean, started Akado, started like working and figuring out what chemistry class my production company yeah. would be doing. Ended up getting my green card, stayed for another year, even after that, because I wanted to make sure that my crew and my team was solid. Yeah. Because if I had left when I got that green card, it wasn't, there was so, it was so reliant on me being there right. that it wouldn't have worked. And what I ended up doing for the last six months is I started attending events. I was like, don't ask me nothing. I'm not here. Yeah. So I would just go and attend and see how people were running Akadope and like they did amazing and then they took over it and then they have made it something even better than I could have foreseen or imagined. Yeah. And uh, came back to the States. Chembu did a really great uh, festival circuit. Then I ended up in one writer's room that led me to another writer's room that led me to another writer's room that I'm hoping leads me to this other writer's room. <laughs> um, and then I did five of five while I was here. And then I'm preparing to shoot my feature. That's amazing. That's uh, amazing. So my advice about roadblocks is they're usually guiding you to what you need to do. Mm. And a roadblock is simply telling you what is not available that you need to create. Actually. Right. Uh. So when I even did Akadoba, I was like, what am I doing in Uganda? I didn't know what I was doing. I was like, I had put all my chips in being in America and I don't know how to be an artist in Uganda. I have a master's degree in acting. Okay, (laughs) what am I gonna do? And I was like, go back to the roadblock. What did you need when you were younger? What what is missing? I was like, oh, there's an artist community that's missing. There's a young artists aren't getting their platform, which is what I was feeling in the States. And so I was like, all right, I'll create one. And so that's how, like, I make my decisions. What is this roadblock actually asking me to do Mm. versus what is this roadblock doing to me? That's very, that is a different thing. But if you see it, it just the same way when I could not find that play, I I could have been like, well, but I'm like, no, what is this roadblock asking of me? It's asking that I write. And I don't know what my career would be like if I didn't write because that's where I get my coin. It's like yeah. from writing, not yeah. from acting. Yeah. And so roadblocks are actually there to guide you if you let them. Mm-hmm. And so I always say, if you're feeling stuck, ask yourself, why do I feel stuck? Oh, I feel stuck because I can't. Well, what can I do with what I have right now mm-hmm. that will soothe this? Because right. I promise you, something in that roadblock is right. going to lead you to where you need to go. Right. That's amazing. And even if we think about roads, like, usually when there's a roadblock, there's something, like, not so great that you're right. not supposed to have. It's actually protection. <laughs> so I think we often, and I do this, like, I was yesterday just on the phone, like, upset about something. And then I had to, to I always go back to it. Like, what is this roadblock? either preventing me from or redirecting me to. And I think it's a practice and it it takes a muscle and like I'm getting faster at it. It takes me like an hour to do versus like back then it took me like a week to do or a month to do. (laughs) But you've got to practice. Right. So if you're feeling stuck, ask yourself, what does this want from you? And find people. I can't say it enough. Find your people. Yes. 
Because I feel you're not meant to do it alone. You're not meant to do it alone. And I know people want to do it alone. Anything alone, to be honest with you. And I think when people realize. (laughs) (laughs) They'll get a lot further quicker if they just realize it's teamwork. Like, figure it. Like, everyone can shine. There's space for everyone. I don't get. Not everyone is looking for the exact same thing. So there's space for you. Yes. I don't know. Actually, I think that's what's dope about your crew. Yeah, y'all's crew really put each other on. And I think it's so it's beautiful to watch because y'all are in the same space. Yeah, and I think it was crazy. I think people are shocked the most, but that's what I that's what I left. I left a country where it didn't matter. There were people you go to a network networking, you're just hey, you go through through school with the same type of people. If you're in uni, you're probably in the same program, so you're always around each other there's a so yeah. people understand that and then so I came here I thought it was normal yeah. people were like no yeah. <laughs> no I think it's dope and I think y'all are showing people that yeah. actually it's possible and it doesn't take away any it doesn't <laughs> you're not losing followers you're not losing you know? no. and yeah I think I've noticed the more the people who do do that a lot they actually rise faster yeah you're both right. here and yeah both of you got that in la yeah you rise he's a ray he's a ray my my queen my queen (laughs) that's what she did and she's she's just gold in every way but like she did that like i don't understand why people don't see that this is the way to move forward i don't know either she didn't look that much into her story i think people do need to look at like where is it that you want to end up is someone doing it what did they do and more likely than none they worked with other people it wasn't a solo dolo effort it was never that's another thing sorry you just reminded me if you really have a bad roadblock yeah go find the person you love like me i love regina king and Mm -hmm. i love Issa Rae. i love that those two women (laughs) i love them so so much um go read their bios go read articles about them and you will see their roadblocks like that's what you have to do on a really tough day go find someone you love like you just love them so much and go read the bios from different people and you'll see them start talking about these roadblocks these roadblocks and you'll be like oh, okay i'm doing it right then yeah because if there's no roadblock it means you're not traveling it means you're in your home it means you're not moving. If there is no rejection, it means you're not trying. Mm-hmm. No, but it's so beautiful to see like your story. And I think a lot of people, I got a lot of DMs. I don't know why, because I'm literally like, my channel is moving to Africa. People are like, how do I get to Canada? How do I get out of here? There's nothing for me here. So it's and there may not, and there may not be anything. There right? may not. It could be the truth, but I think it's refreshing that even though you left, your home is still on your mind. It's still oh, something that it's like, no, that's all day, every day. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. It's not like the grass is greener on the other side. You were just like, let me take the opportunity that that grass may have and bring it over here. You know? Yeah, that's- and I miss home. I miss oh, home a lot. I miss yeah. my friends. I miss my social life. I miss, you know. Social it's life. A, and also, no, it's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice. I think people think that when you move out here, it's easier. It's actually not. It's, it's harder. Not. And that's why I was you know, people. And like, you can actually use what you have here, but that's also me speaking in my privilege. But I do understand that you, I just always say, I'm like, do it. If you can, go abroad see what you can do there but you'll realize that you there is a sacrifice in going it's not just oh i'm gonna yeah. get money <laughs> there's a lot yeah. of drink. and different people's souls thrive different places like mm-hmm. i also know that my my me as me i cannot live in uganda for longer than four months i yeah. i realized that i, I just Daddy, vacations and I'm out. Yeah, I'm tired. My, I just can't. But yeah, I yeah. think you've got to you've got to be true to yourself and not have any shame in it. Like yeah. I, I used to have shame about it. Of course, I can. No, I can't. No, no. Yeah. I realized yeah. I was like I could do this just every few once weeks if I could. I need to go through yeah. something. Yeah. 
But I love, I love, yeah, I love both places. And I think I love the conversation between both places and I love living in both places. And I love that. Well, thank you so, so much for sharing this. I feel it's going to help a lot of people. I think it'll answer a lot of people who've been asking me questions. <laughs> And I'm like, you're going to talk to people who've left. I came. Like, I was yeah. like, I'm going to get it. Let me get out of here. So I'm grateful. I know. And also, you might leave too. You might leave too. I don't know if you, if you answer this with followers. But how old are you, Rachel? You, oh, might, you can delete this part if you don't. Oh, no, it's okay. I'm 30. 30. 30. I turned 30. And yeah, you might, you might leave. That's the other thing. Nothing is permanent. And I wish people knew that. Like, you might leave. You might leave. You may wake up in two years and be like, this is not the place that's feeding me. Yeah. I might move back to Uganda. I don't know. I actually, when people say, oh, how long are you staying in LA? I'm like, for as long as it feeds me. You're right. And I will move. Nothing, nothing is permanent. And yeah. I think people think that when you make a decision, it's forever. For everything. At least that pressure. That's true. For me, I'm just like, at this stage of my life, I'm much more happier here. It feeds me a lot more than North America. I think I- Yeah, then stay. Because for a while I was going to LA. If it wasn't for COVID, I was like, I, I, was like yeah, I really, really, I went for Coachella. I went for the Beyonce Coachella and I was like, met the dopest people. It was just a different vibe. Yeah. Like, you like my people. A lot of similarities though. So I could see how you- I could see you thriving in LA. <laughs> I need to cover like six months. <laughs> you are made for LA. You are made for LA. <laughs> I love that. But thank you so, so much for talking. You're so oh, welcome. welcome. If people, I, I'll let you say um, where people can find your work, where people can find you online, all of that fun stuff. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at K-E-M-I underscore Y-O-N-D-O. -O. That's it. I'm, I, I, yeah, and off Twitter. <laughs> I love your stories. You have the most amazing um, stories. Um, <laughs> someone told me I'm not gonna find a man because of my stories, and I laughed so hard. She was like, "Girl, you never gonna find a man with those stories." <laughs> I was like, well, then you <laughs> No, they're in LA. I was like, first of all, you don't know if I have a bad because I would never let you know. And second of all, <laughs> don't be wishing things on me like that. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Well, thank you so, so much. So um, well, yeah. And guys, everyone, thank you guys for tuning in. As always, please subscribe, like, hit the bell notification button, and I'll check you in another video. Bye.